Well, he moves in rarefied political circles and is a big celebrity around town. He's also a club owner and the force behind a new celebrity website. Now, an extended interview on the power of personal branding with Kenny Kuneni, owner of the Club Zar brand and a lover of the female form and sushi, preferably both together. So, that he set out with the intention of building a personal brand. I'll say yes. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that uh, my brand stands out. Um, I, I studied a lot of brands in the world, and especially in the U.S., you know, how they operate and how they get to be world-known and world-class. And uh, I just put that in the South African context. Mm. Um, however, I must say that uh, South Africa is still a little bit... Um, two steps backwards <coughs> in terms of um, personal branding and, and also marketing of business. Um, the U.S. has taken it to another level, and South African society is still coming up mm. to accept uh, the type of guerrilla branding and marketing that I am introducing. As, as far as you're concerned, do, do you just make this up as you go along, or is there a Kenny Kunani brand strategy that you've actually sat down, thought about, and even committed to paper? Um, there is a Kenny Gunene uh, branding. You know, um, I have three names, but Kenny Gunene is very easy to pronounce. It's very easy for anyone to say. And um, since my vision was to have a world global brand, I had to make sure that I apply my names that are easy. You, you know what I'm saying? However, <coughs> when you have a business, most of the business in South Africa don't have a face. And in the entertainment business, what makes that business is the face. Mm. So if you ask anyone now, if anyone sees ZA, they see Kenny Gunene. Mm. If anyone sees Kenny Gunene, they see ZA. So it's personal branding, but it's linked to the business mm. branding also. A couple of weeks ago on the program, we did a, a story on brand value. Um, what's the Kenny Kunene brand worth? <laughs> I see the Kenny Kunani brand has also brought two wristwatches with him today. <laughs> I never, I never say the the, the figures, yeah. but let me tell you uh, what Kenny Kunani brand has achieved yeah. um, globally. Um, I so you're also good at spinning stories too. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm one of the few, if not the only, South African to get a two-page article on not really. Um, content, but a mixture of content, uh, editorial news, with um, your uh, tablet news mm. on the New York, uh, New York Times website. Mm. I got a two-page uh, story there. Um, and from that story, I am the ambassador of Ace of Spades, Armand Diblinac, which is a number one champagne in the mm. world. Jay-Z is the ambassador of, of the same brand. So um, it, it, it shows how I planned um, the, mm -hmm. the, the Kenny Kunene brand to take it global. Mm -hmm. When I, I'm, I'm bringing five international artists in this country, um, Timbaland, Ciara, Lil Kim, Fed Joe, and DJ Scratch. Timbaland is the world's mm -hmm. uh, most celebrated producer for the last decade mm -hmm. and now. Um, he doesn't do tours, mm -hmm. but because of my brand, he was persuaded to come to South Africa. Do you live the brand Kenny Kunani? Is it a, do, do you live a life of luxury? Yes. Uh, Unashamedly. I don't, believe, yeah. I don't believe that you should be... A, but y your brand must not represent your lifestyle. Mm. Because then you are going to be a fake. So I'm not a fake. If you ask anyone from primary, uh, they will tell you this is who Kenny Kunani is. Mm. So my brand and the type of business I decided to follow uh, links very well with my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I live luxury, I live elegance, I am fleshy, unashamed, unashamedly so. These have been my, my dreams when I was throwing stones in the 80s. But you've also taken to, it to extremes, haven't you? To many people, you'll be known as the sushi on the girl guy. And that, um, that can't have done your brand any good. It did my brand a lot of good. Mm. You see, uh, Jeremy, um, anything that's new and unusual is often met with resistance mm. and is often met with 
Um, but it was also excessive yes, and in bad yes, taste. Can yes, but, but when people get used mm. to it, they accept it and they leave it. Look at how many sushi parties have been hosted after mm. my party. And um, the media has taken interest in that. Mm. Do you still uh, eat sushi of beautiful women? Um, I haven't done a party uh, up to so far um, doing that. But, but uh, you, you would do it again? I said I wouldn't do it again, but you see, um, I would do it again if um, it brings me money and it adds value to my brand. Mm. I will never sac uh, sacrifice my brand. I suppose the brand lesson here is, as, as you've just said, you, you've got to keep reinventing yourself, but you've got to do new and outrageous things sometimes. Look at Lady Gaga, for instance. I mean, that's yes. someone you must admire. I admire Lady Gaga. In fact, I went to the summers with uh, some glasses that I imported from Belgium. Mm. They have an aluminium net. Um, and in the papers, I was called that uh, I did the Gaga thing. Yeah. The most important thing in, in entertainment... You didn't wear clothes made out of sushi, though, did no, you? No, no, no. Yeah. I wore a very expensive <laughs> coat. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to do that one. Yeah. Um, in entertainment, as a brand, you have to be very creative. Yeah. You have to come with new ideas. You have to be very entertaining. And that's why I'm saying um, South African society is still going there. But if you look at young people in South Africa, because they are, they are role models, they are heroes, are all in the States, you know, guys that do these things, they watch the Kim Kardashian show and so on and so on. They see that life of luxury. So they associate with me more. But do you really see yourself as a role model? You've been called an ex-con, you've been called a fraudster, you've been called the Ponzi guy. I mean, you do have a checkered past. Yes, and um, you, you see, my past. You're was not really a role model, are you? My, I am a role model. My past was not revealed by anyone else. It was revealed by me when we did schools with Gaten McKenzie. We've done more than 2,000 schools in this country telling kids not to do crime, telling them about drugs and the reality of imprisonment. Mm -hmm. So I was the one that said, this is, what, this is my past. Um, if you look at my Facebook and uh, Twitter, I have young people that say I, I am their role model. You see, what, what gives them hope? is the very fact of my past, that yes, I was an ex-convict. However, when I came out of prison, I didn't continue with crime. Mm. I decided to change my life and to be the best that I can be. And most of my critics who were sitting basking in the sun whilst I was in prison and when I came out, I have become more successful than them. And some of them is out of jealousy that they criticize me, that they call me ex-convict. Yes, I'm ex-con. I, I, I will never deny that. That's part of my past. And that's what I tell most inmates when I motivate them that don't be ashamed or try to run away from what you've become. Embrace it, learn from it, and grow with it. Yes, prison is a house that built me. In the personal branding space that you occupy, how important are political connections? You seem to know anybody who's anybody. <laughs> is, is, is that important? Uh, Jeremy, I'm, I'm a former political activist. I was involved in, in, um, in COSAS in the struggle uh, during the 80s. I was imprisoned uh, during uh, the 80s for political reasons. So I don't really need political connections. I need to portray myself as a brand. I need to sell myself. I need to, to convince the consumer out there that they need to associate mm. with me and my business. As a, so as a, as a personal to... branding expert, how would you define Julius Malema's personal brand? He's a contemporary of yours. He's a, he's a colleague. He's a friend, isn't he? No, he's, he's not a, a friend in the way I define a friend, but he's my comrade because we meet within political mm. circles and in the entertainment. Mm. Um, but I must say, um, he, is, he is a very big brand, um, most of the people lose their brand because what starts to make, to make them, mm. when they get criticized, they run away from it. Mm. You cannot, if you play soccer and soccer makes you, immediately you get criticized by the way you play soccer and you, you decide to, to create a brand out of volleyball. Mm. That's not who you are. So Julius' brand is based on who he is, to be critical, to be vocal, and to be straightforward. And, you, and you think he manages that brand very well? He manages it very, very well. Whenever he speaks, the media jumps. It's because of the personal brand that he has created. And that is in politics. So even in entertainment, in my space, you have to be the same. You have to make sure that you stick to what made you. And what has made me, obviously, as you said, mm -hmm. is controversy. Um, um, a definition of controversy... Do you find controversy or does controversy find you? 
I think controversy finds me. Mm. I plan how I but do my you don't, event. But you, you don't push it away, though. Everybody, everybody that has been labeled controversial in the world is the best brand. Mm. You have now us labeled as controversial. He's the biggest brand. Mm. PDD is labeled as controversial. All the big rappers, they are the biggest brands. Uh, Lady Gaga is labeled as very controversial. Mm. She's the biggest brand. So when you are labeled as controversial, it means you have made it. Mm. It's, like, it's like you are being given uh, the, the accolades and you are now being given your degree that now you are a brand. I, I understand all of that, but are we not also obsessed with the shallow and the irrelevant in this country? I mean, celebrity brands, what, what, what difference do they make? What change do they affect? Um, if you talk about... Say, it's, look, a, it's a fleeting thing, isn't it? No, no, no. Here no. one day, gone the next. I don't agree with you. Um, a brand goes because a brand has lost ideas. Mm. It's like companies. Companies come and companies go. It's because they don't work hard to be creative. They don't work hard to impress the consumer. They, they now um, become uh, comfortable and say, no, 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 people will still mm. come and buy. It's the same as celebrities. If you rest on your laurels and you believe that you are a brand and therefore you are out there, you will fade. So you have to make sure that um, you enhance that brand. If you look at me, Jeremy, I decide when I want to be in the media mm. because I control my brand. I make sure mm. that my brand is there for a particular reason. You're also a, a, a young person's brand in many ways. How old are you now? I'm 40. 40. I mean, are you still going to be doing this when you're 50, when you're 60? I mean, surely at some point you've got to look at that personal brand and the brand's got to mature or it's got to die. It's got to fade off the scene completely. Fortunately, yeah. in the entertainment mm -hmm. uh, business, the brand doesn't die mm -hmm. as long as it's creative. Look at Hugh Hefner. Mm -hmm. Look at Don King in boxing. Do you admire Hugh Hefner? I admire Hugh Hefner. He started, he was highly criticized. 10, 15 years down the line, he was having coffee tea with presidents mm -hmm. of countries and billionaires of countries. That's how he has built his brand. And he's still going on up until now. But so no, I, it's Kenny I will go A lot on. of people say that the Hugh Hefner brand has become a caricature. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a silly old man now, cavorting with women who are old enough to be his great-grandchildren. Exactly. You see, those are moralists who always mm. criticize and tell you what to do, mm. yet they've never done it. Mm. So Hugh Hefner is living his life. Uh, whose morality are we talking about? Yeah. So I'm saying, as long as my niece carry me, I will go on partying with young people. Mm. Even when I'm 80, when I'm 90, and my niece carry me, Pro I'll keep I was going to say, providing you've got the energy. As long yeah. as I have the energy out. Entertainment yeah. is very easy. Why do you wear two wristwatches? Because I'm global. You know, I talk to people in New York. I talk to people in, in L.A., so I don't have the, the seconds to calculate <laughs> six hours backwards. I can afford it. Why not? Can and it's also branding, you, you know, to say... This is two watches that's you, that's associate with Kenny Konani. That's the trademark. Yes. Kenny Konani, good talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's the man. That's the interview. Your thoughts now on Brand Kenny on our Facebook page and also on our Twitter feed. And here are the details. Coming up, behind the scenes of a big new beer commercial.